Welcome to the Porsche Macan. This is a 2019 Porsche Macan base model. Uh, it was a holdover, uh, so it was sitting on the lot for a while. Um, so I'm out here test driving it. There weren't many changes between the 2019 and the 2020. I think there was a change from USB to USB-C and some changes in packaging, like the premium package has a sunroof. Uh, this model does not have the sunroof it does have a premium package and it's also got the leather option with these lovely red seats uh, it has ventilated and heated seats which are wonderful um, now it's it does have the base four center a lot of people say oh you got to get the s model of the macan and i kind of disagree with that i've actually driven both the macan s and the macan and um, base and the 248 horsepower and 276 i believe foot pounds of torque it's more than enough for any sort of driving um, unless you're out doing I don't know highway poles racing um, your the s model uh, gives you more highway power but around town the four cylinder actually feels really quick especially considering there's about a 200 pound weight difference this is just under 4100 pounds um, and the s is around 4300 pounds that V6 up front, you can feel it in the front of the car when you're driving it. They also put bigger tires and wheels on the S and the other models, which you can definitely feel. I drove a base model with the 21 inch wheels and the fact that they increase both the width and the size, it, it's probably 20 pounds difference on each corner. And with the base model, you can definitely feel that weight. The car feels sluggish with the bigger wheels. So I do recommend sticking with the 18 or 19s or going with some lightweight aftermarket 20s on the base model. Um, the other thing about the the uh, the S model is I didn't like the sound of the engine. The six cylinder just didn't sound very appealing. Uh, the four cylinder uh, was it was actually sounds pretty fun. It sounds more like a hot hatch than uh, a raspy two liter four cylinder because Porsche obviously does a good job with their exhaust tuning. There's no resonator on this exhaust. It's just got mufflers, so it's it's got a good exhaust note. And uh, this does have the the seven speed dual clutch transmission which is from Audi and the four cylinder is from Volkswagen it's technically the same motor as the A4 and I believe the Q5 but it's tuned up a little bit by Porsche so it's, it makes a little bit more power uh, I had a Mark 7 GTI before dual clutch six speed dual clutch it was a 2017 model and that car was wonderful I really love the dual clutch combination with that car uh, this car, the, the PDK, they call it PDK, but really it's a DSG, uh, you know, Volkswagen versus Porsche nomenclature, um, and it's it's pretty good. It's not as good as that six-speed was in the in the GTI in terms of being smart when it's in sport mode and, and doing its own shifting. Uh, but the wonderful thing is this does have metal paddles for the shifter, so if you do want to play around with the shifter, this feels like it's you know hundred thousand dollar car with this wonderful Porsche steering wheel. Uh, the interior is right now I would say the best interior you can get for almost any car in terms of combination of of proper buttons, a solid 10 half inch touchscreen display, analog gauges with an LCD there. Every car, <laughs> they should mandate every car have a center tachometer with a digital speedometer reading in the center because that's really all you need for your daily driving duties. Um, and then you're, you have everything over here on your touchscreen. And with Porsche, they, with this updated touchscreen that came out with 2019, I believe the Panamera and all the other models have it now, you can customize the home screen and make it how you want. So right now I've got the radio in one third of the display, nav in the other third, and then there's a spot for the phone, the weather, and uh, you know just time and information. So I don't have to scroll through menus to get to what I want to get to. I want to get to the radio information, I can click that, but it's got the change your information here. Uh, if I want to get the nav, I just hit the hit it pulls up, and I go through what I wanted to do. It's wonderful. It's uh, I took a look at. I've driven several other competitors of this car: the Q5, uh, the X3. I didn't look at any of the Mercedes Benz. Um, then there's other cars like uh, the the Forerunner uh, and other smaller SUVs that can fit in a, a short garage. We have a problem of a short garage. Uh, you can only fit maybe a 195 inch car maximum in our garage other than if you get any longer and you can't walk past it uh, so cars like uh, you know small pickup trucks Tacomas 
uh, Rangers, etc., which are over two, they're about 215 to 220 inches, they don't fit in the garage. So, uh, a smaller SUV uh, is kind of where it's at for most people, unless you have a huge garage space and you're not, or you don't care about parking the car in the garage. Uh, but with this car, it does have a 4,400 pound towing capacity. Uh, competitors, the Q5 has the same. Uh, I believe the X3 was 5,000 pounds, the 4Runner, 5,000 pounds. The Grand Cherokee, which is around 190, 195 inches, I believe, that one has 7,000 pounds. So if you really need towing, you go with that, but you really lose out on interior quality going to that car. Um, and the other big thing, uh, comparing to a lot of those cars, is the way this car handles. And when you drive a normal SUV, it tends to roll over in the front when you go into a corner. The, the weight, you feel the weight, it just it feels ponderous. Even the X3, the Q5 is kind of, yeah, it's still like that. Of course, 4Runner doesn't handle well at all. Um, this handles very differently than a lot of cars you're going to drive. The rear end actually squats when you're going into a corner. So the front end has very linear springs and the rears are more progressive. And uh, this also has basically, a, I think, a 1090 power distribution. So 10% of the front, 90 of the rear. You can watch it on the display here and it maybe goes to 2080, but most of the time it's rear-wheel drive bias. So when you're going in the corner, you kind of, you're, you're skating with the car instead of uh, rolling into the corner and feeling the understeer. This feel this is very neutral handling vehicle. Uh, in my opinion, this is like, if you want to, if you have a GTI in the, you know, $30,000 range, and you want to go to a Golf R in the $40,000 range, most people say, okay, next step, S3, going into the, the $50,000 range. I think you, I disagree with that. This is the next step up from the Golf R. A uh, little bit less power, but because you get the Porsche interior, you get everything's laid out better like the like the Golfs are as opposed to the Audis. Uh, the, the A3s right now, they've got a new A3 coming, of course. Um, but this also has a towing capacity. You don't get towing capacity in, you know, a Golf or a A3 or, a, you know, Audi TT, which has that similar drivetrain. Plus, this has the longitudinal drivetrain from an A4 or a uh, Q5. So, when you look in the engine bay with the four-cylinder, there's a ton of room. You can work on everything if you really had to. And being a longitudinal drivetrain, everything is proper in this car. Double wishbone front suspension, uh, rear suspension is multi-leak, I believe, and you can feel it. You can feel the engineering into this car, uh, even compared to the Q5, which has a similar in, uh, chassis. So it's it's very interesting what Porsche's done, even with the base model. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take for a drive on probably my favorite road, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about how it drives. Now, this steering wheel is absolutely perfect. When you talk about ergonomics, your hands basically go right on here perfectly. Uh, it's just designed to be a driver's car. And what we'll do coming up here is we're in sport mode now. We'll do a launch from a stop here and see what we get. You can hear the you get the dual clutch farts <laughs> that you get in other other Volkswagen products, which is wonderful. Let me get this out here. Throw this down. Get that so it's not making any noise. All right. And uh, the power delivery, you can see it's hunting around a little bit for gears, even in sport mode. But when you go down into a corner like this, it just hunkers down and it just pulls right through that corner. You just tuck in the, in the front end, it's wonderful. The seats, even though these are the 14-way base seats, I, I would say these are an excellent seat for not only daily driving, because they're very comfortable, uh, but they also have enough bolstering for this kind of back road driving. Now, if you, uh, uh, you know, if you're coming from a sports car, say a uh, uh, BRZ or, uh, or something else with really good bolstering, uh, you will notice that this has a little bit less bolstering. The GTI is another car with excellent bolstering. But if you're coming from a car that doesn't have as good a bolstering, say you sit in Audi, current model Audi S3, and you're like, oh, these seats don't have any bolstering, this is an upgrade on that. 
And this does have the leather package, so it's got some nice stitching up on the uh, the dash here. Um, it, it is definitely noticeable over the base material, but uh, you don't have to spend the money on that if you don't want to, to get a lot of enjoyment out of this car. Now this car, uh, MSRP, is about $60,000, but uh, with Porsche, it's very easy to get uh, five to 10% off with haggling. Uh, I believe this was 8% off with this car because it was a holdover model. It's around $56,000. And looking at a lot of the competition, which is around uh, like a Q5, base Q5 or an X3, you're under 50,000. Uh, but the difference is noticeable. You, you definitely notice with everything about the car, the way it feels, the way it drives, you're getting that extra five to ten thousand dollars in difference moving up to the Porsche. Now, if you want to manually shift your gears, we'll come up to a section here where we're going to be able to do that. Um, stability on the freeway, it's interesting. I, driving the car with the bigger wheels and tires, I would say stability is better. Uh, the front end has a little bit of a, a wobble to it. I, I, it's mostly because of the tires. This comes with 33 PSI recommendation up front, but I bumped it up to 36, and it, that definitely helped a lot with the stability up front. Uh, and it, even with towing, which we've tried towing with this, and it's been extremely good with towing, um, getting around 20 miles a gallon towing about 3,000 pounds, which is surprisingly good. Uh, around town, it's uh, the EPA rates at 17.23, so not that great. The S model, you don't lose anything, and gas mileage going to the S, uh, but there have been some reliabilities with the six cylinders, reliability issues. There's a, uh, a bolt issue with the valve covers on that for some reason, where they used aluminum bolts. So if you go to um, if you go up to that, you're, you're losing a little bit of reliability because the EA Triple Eight Volkswagen motor in here is wonderful. Uh, Reliability-wise, it's been very strong um, early on with like the Mark Seven uh, first model year. There was some turbo issues, but those have been resolved. Uh, I would say if you want to get the more reliable engine, go with this. And I don't know about the this is 2.9 liter in the GTS and the turbo I haven't heard too much about that reliability and we're here doing a considerable rate of speed right now and the car feels you know it's it's an Autobahn cruiser you can haul ass on a freeway if you wanted to and you just feel like you're going 20 miles an hour um, yeah, it's beautiful up here right now they've had a couple fires up here we're up in the Sierra Mountains and uh, it's interesting to see how over the years this changes. Sometimes there used to be a lot of trees through here, and now a lot of it's kind of come down uh, from the fires. But it's starting to grow back a little bit in terms of the grasses and some of the smaller trees. They planted a lot of smaller trees in here. This is kind of a great stretch of road if you're just going straight. But coming up here in a little bit, we're going to be hitting the twisty part that goes for another eight miles. And that's the fun part of this road that's really wonderful. You can really see how this car, the Macan, handles in little back road type twisties. Now this road also has some of the best pavement I've ever been on in Northern California. It's going on, it's getting close to 20 years old now that they've had this pavement here, but uh, because it has so little traffic and they paved it with rather thick cement, it's almost like a racetrack up here. <laughs> I hate that encourage people to drive up here for for you know excessive reasons but you know just come up here relax have a good time there's no traffic because uh, we're in the middle of literally nowhere there's no houses no nothing to worry about just a really solid piece of good piece of road for this car being that it is a Porsche they made the seating position lower and if you go sitting in other cars say a Honda Passport you can't get the seat as low as you can in this car uh, or as far back and so if you're a larger person you can fit 10 tends to be German cars they, they make seating positions more available for 
larger people. But the backseat room is compromised when you do that. You do lose out on whoever's behind the driver has to be uh, pretty small. You can feel the, you can definitely feel the weight and the fact that it's an SUV, but this is pretty much one of the best handling SUVs you can get. I would recommend if you option it, if you're optioning this from the factory, if you don't have any snow to worry about, get the summer tire option. This has the all season option. Um, Tire size is a little compromised up front with the 18s or 19s, uh, but like I said, the weight is the big deal because it's definitely got plenty of power. It's one of the fun corners here. see it's a very dynamic drive for you know having to get something that has towing capacity oh this is too slow this is too slow 35 mile an hour that is too slow Shifting is quick. Um, it doesn't like to downshift when it, when you're not supposed to downshift. That's one thing you might notice with this car. Interesting thing I just discovered, if you do want to do a launch, you got to have traction control off. Yeah, that's much better. It's interesting, uh, turning off traction control seems to liven up the... Uh, the shifter just just doing sport mode doesn't seem to be quite enough Confidence is pr pretty high for driving this car quickly like this. There is that moment where you notice that the weight is starting to cause some understeer and you've got to back off, but it takes a while to get there. Brakes, uh, there is a difference, definitely a difference with brakes between the base and the S, but they do have decent brakes on the base model. 
you could get better pads and uh, maybe some uh, uh, upgraded materials on there but you know you don't have to do that if you don't want to if you're not worried about you know, track days or anything like that with a with a car like this getting it onto a track day is nearly impossible here's one of the best parts of the road It's downhill here through here, so it's a little bit of a tough area. So you want to be a little conservative. Brakes haven't faded yet, so that's good. to chuck through here I would say the transition is one of the best parts about this car just transitioning it between cor corners is kind of like dancing see right there yeah right there it just feels wonderful interesting things these days is how expensive everything's gotten. You get to the point where you're like, well, I could get something for $40,000, $45,000, but, or I can get the best I can for $50,000, $55,000, which is buying, you know, a, a little bit better brand that's got some better options on it. Uh, and some, you know, this gives you the ability to have fun, you know, on a daily basis. You don't have to have a sports car and something to tow with if you're not towing 10,000 pounds you can do both with one car and then have a full-fledged track car if you're just you know we have two cars and you're not worried about family for family purposes this is more of a two person maybe two plus one family uh have it you know having a kid there uh in the seat behind the, the passenger this is more of a car for when you buy when you're kind of at the point in your life where you want something nicer. Uh, you want to have something really good, but you don't want to have to worry about um, you know, having something that's not the best out there. So you get something that's really good, and I would say the Mukon would be a really good option for you. 